What's going on guys? This is Carl with the Race Red Channel. Today I'm doing a little review on the 2006 Suzuki DRZ 400 Supermoto. The thing with this bike is it's pretty much the same. Since they started making them, they haven't really made any changes. They all have pretty much the same setup. So you can take a review from a 2006 and apply it to any other year model, including the brand new ones, and they're all pretty much the same. I've geared this bike um, one up on the counter shaft sprocket and two down on the rear sprocket. That has given me a lot better gearing for just general use uh, here on the street. I think stock gearing will only give you about 85 miles per hour and I just hit for the first time the 100 mile an hour plane. So I hit 101 miles per hour, which is pretty impressive for a little 400 cc engine like this. That, that is very impressive. It's been really reliable. It's got 19,000 miles on it. 10,000 of those were my miles since I purchased the bike with 8,500 miles on it. As far as upgrades, it's pretty much stock. I like to keep my engines completely stock. The only thing I've changed is the exhaust system. I have a full FMF exhaust on it. I don't like to make any major modifications to a bike, especially when it comes to the engine and when it can affect the machine's reliability. So that's it. I just keep really good oil on it and run it. This bike is capable of, obviously it's capable of 100 miles an hour on the street. It can cruise easily at 80. So I have put many miles on it. I've chosen this bike over my Yamaha R1 so many times. I've had them a similar length of time. And this bike has gotten about twice the mileage on it as the R1 because this bike is just so convenient to ride. If the pavement ends and it becomes dirt, it is a very capable dirt bike. With my current gearing um, that, uh, that can reach over 100 miles per hour, obviously it's going to be a little bit taller. So in the dirt, this bike suffers a little bit, but it still has the torque when you put it in first gear to crawl through a lot of what you need to go through. So I wouldn't worry about it unless you're gonna be taking the bike in really technical terrain all the time, which I hope you wouldn't be doing with a Supermoto anyway, because the 17 inch tires with street tires on them are pretty much useless in the dirt. You can take this bike in the dirt, but the mud is your worst enemy. Do not take this bike in the mud. This basically has sport bike tires on it. So there's no knob whatsoever. And once you hit mud, you basically just hit ice. You're gonna fall over. I've said this before, and it still holds true that, you know, if I had to pick one bike to keep in my garage, it would be this one for sure. There's no other bike I would hold in my garage um, other than this one if I could only choose one bike. The reason for that is I can't take the R1 on the dirt and I can't take my dirt bikes on the street. But this bike is both worlds. You can take it out here in the dirt without any issues. I wouldn't take it on technical trails, but just regular trails are uh, fine. But you know, trails like this are totally fine for the DRZ Supermoto tires. This is really dry terrain. Hard pack stuff is what it really likes. If you go into sand, it's kind of questionable, but mud, I would definitely steer clear of.
because I've taken this in mud before and it's just like riding on ice. Without any knob whatsoever, this tire cannot grip on mud. But it's pretty cool to be able to ride out to a location and just hit a trail at your leisure without having to worry about your bike really. This bike can definitely make it in uh, the easy terrain and there's nothing out here that really isn't easy in my opinion. The suspension on this bike is a little bit stiff and it doesn't have the travel that a full-blown dirt bike would have. And a lot of that you feel through the bike because of the 17-inch uh, rims on this. So it feels like you don't have near the travel and you don't, but you also don't have near the clearance to get over stuff like logs, rocks, ruts, stuff like that. Um, so you definitely can't take trails with the same amount of confidence. However, you can definitely still take trails with this bike. There's nothing wrong with it. Can you um, do any trail with it? Probably not. It's going to hinder your ability um, in comparison to riding a dirt bike. But again, it depends on what you want. If you want to be able to ride mostly street and yet be able to come out here and hit the trails a little bit, this is a really good option. There's definitely nothing wrong with this bike. You know, I'm still getting airborne off of some of this stuff. It's uh, handling it pretty well. I don't feel out of control at any point. It's, as long as it's somewhat hard packed, for sure. You know, I could, I could ride for days out here. <laughs> now you wanna see me pucker, then uh, you throw some mud in front of me right now and I would definitely pucker. Because this bike, like I said before, it does not it doesn't do mud. It's got street tires on it. It's like taking your sport bike out and hitting mud with it. It's not gonna work very well. Another good thing about this bike in particular is a lot of it is plastic. It's got a metal tank on it, but that is very protected. So, um, you know, if you go down on this bike, it's not going to hurt it. Especially if you have big hand guards on it, wrap around hand guards like I've got on this one. You really can't hurt this bike. So, as we talk about versatility and how it relates to this bike, I think this is a pretty good example of that. You can take it out here and you can ride easy trails all day long without worrying. Um, if you're a decent rider, I mean it, it all depends on your riding level, on your skill level, where you can take this bike. You know, a professional rider is obviously going to be able to take it where I cannot take it. And obviously a uh, rider of less skill than, than me is going to have trouble with something like this. but. So it really just depends on the rider, just like everything. But can you take it out here without worrying about the bike itself? Yes, you can. It's very easy to take it out here and I feel like I could do this kind of stuff all day long. And with the fuel range that I have on this bike, which is about 125 miles, on one tank, you can go a long ways. But the engine is very forgiving. Just got so much torque. So 
So as I said earlier, I have my bike geared up a little bit so that I can do freeway speed. And yet here I am hitting this trail, just lugging it along, um, doing about 25 with no problem whatsoever. If I have to slow down even, um, I'm not, I wasn't even in first gear, so just click it down the first. You can easily lug, probably, oh, I'd say you can safely lug it around 10 miles an hour is where I would be safe lugging it around without using too much clutch. A lot of people take their supermotos and they ride around on sidewalks and um, that's that's pretty unimpressive to me. This is what a supermoto is really really designed for is to take it out and explore. That's what's so cool about them is you can take them out and there's no limitation to your exploration on a supermoto. If you wanted to ride for days out here, you could take some extra fuel, stick it in your backpack, and you could be gone for a couple days pretty easy. So even this loose terrain is no match for this engine because it's such a smooth engine that it just hooks up. I mean, I'm. It's basically a sport bike tire on the back. No knobs whatsoever, just a slick, slick tire. And yet, I'm able to hook up because the engine is just so smooth. Definitely a reason that uh, I'm a big fan of this machine. Anyways guys, I think that I've given a sufficient review of my 2006 DRZ 400 Supermoto. Uh, overall, it's just a great bike. There's there's no way you can go wrong getting a Supermoto, period. I mean, if you want a bike that you can take anywhere and just explore literally anywhere, I mean, look at where I'm at right now. If I had a sport bike, there is no way you would catch me way out here on that thing. And a dirt bike, sure, I can get out here, but I'd have to take my truck and, and haul it out here and then ride. And on previous videos, you guys have seen me ride my dirt bikes out here, and my pace is a lot faster. I'm a lot more comfortable on the dirt bikes. However, you, you make the sacrifice of, you know, you have to load it up in the truck and everything. But this has been my review of the DRZ 400 Supermoto. Every year is pretty much exactly the same. They haven't made hardly any changes to it. So this is relevant throughout the, the year range. I don't know of any changes they've made whatsoever. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the review and I hope you take the time to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. See you guys.